Aloha and welcome to the Woman Unleashed Online Retreat. My name is Amber Kuile Mailani Bonici, your retreat host. And we're going to be diving in today, looking at some affirmations, some ways to tune inwards, to click into maybe what you're wanting and needing moving forward, as opposed to what you might have been doing, uh, which is yeah, maybe paid attention or, or putting your energy on things that you're not wanting. But before we do that, let's go ahead. We'll take three breaths, get ourselves present and settled before we, before we dive in, before I introduce you to my cohort, my cohort today. So I invite you just to take a moment and to hmm, notice any energy things that have been going on from earlier today that you might be carrying that's on your mind. Inhaling in, exhale, release. Anything coming up in the future that's pulling your attention away from this moment. Inhaling in, exhale, release. And our third and final breath, inhaling and smelling this moment together. Mm. When you're ready to open your eyes, I'm going to introduce you to our retreat guide today, introducing the lovely Adley Wynn. She is the best-selling author of One Day at a Time Diary, How to Be Well, and Energy Healing Made Easy. She helps people release what is in the way of living an empowered, wholehearted life. She lives in Ireland with her husband, four children, and their dog and a cat. And she's also um, author of the Inner Compass Trilogy, her first major work of fiction. So you can join Abby for pre-recorded sessions, self-paced healing stuff, uh, live group healing sessions. But today we have Abby with us. Welcome, welcome, Abby. Thank you so much for having me here. That was beautiful, the three breaths. I really like that. Thank you. You know, um, I first uh, tuned into that when I was, for me, well, honestly, honestly, it's for me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, help me too and everyone watching. Right, right. But I, I, especially when I would meet client after client that, um, for me to get present again and be like, okay, I'm here with this person, this, like this moment, this time. And what, what was fascinating was that when I would do that, I wouldn't get tired. Right. Like normally I, uh, it's cause I would carry <laughs> from the previous session, just <laughs> by the end of the day, like feel all these things, but, um, yeah, that practice really helped. And, you know, it's a comp, the, past and present was a combination of energy work that I learned from um, someone else. It wasn't breathing, but it was something else just to kind of release those cords. And then mm -hmm. Debbie Rosa, she's a founder of the Nia technique. And she, lots of times before they start their movement practice, they'll inhale and smell the moment. And um, so I brought that in as well. So thanks for asking about Wonderful. it. Wonderful. It, it's, you know, the times that we're in now is so interesting how people are incorporating these things into everyday day-to-day -day life the kind of stuff I was doing maybe 10 years ago that nobody was doing then and it really changes everything it's an mm. alchemy we're alchemizing the energy between us so that we can get the most out of it <laughs> did you hear that friends we're alchemizing <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness is that your magic wand in your hand there is that <laughs> this, this is my magical tombow marker wand yes yes that we would have easy <laughs> oh my gosh so when you and i um, when abby and i were first connecting about our session um we ended up talking about um tuning into the frequency of words as energy right and you mentioned that that was um just the power of our words, right? That um, that this is part of the work that you've been working with. Can you share a little bit more about that? Because I know here in Hawaii, we have a definite, you know, we believe in the resonance of sound and frequency. And, and so I'd love to hear kind of your take on it um, because it is so powerful. It can, it can help us or it can just like, <laughs> not. Absolutely can. 
It absolutely can. In Ireland, most people here wouldn't have such an awareness of those things. And in a previous life, in a previous career, I was um, in an open plan office with this woman who was a teacher. And she would repeat to herself many times a day, that's so stupid. And, and even with the hand, you know, stupid, stupid. And I'm going, you're taking the energy of stupid and you're putting it into your energy field. And then you're affirming that that's part of the makeup of who you are. And, um, but I didn't have the words to say it like that at the time. I just said, you have to stop doing that. You have to stop doing that. But, you know, I'm a psychotherapist. And what I found is when you keep everything up here, that's, you know, it can be really organized and you can have brilliant, you know, processes of thoughts up here, but you're still not vibrating to the entire chord of the resonance of the words that you're putting in. So you can eliminate those words and you can pay attention to the words that you're using. But as an energy healer, and, and, and you know, the book Energy Healing Made Easy, it's not easy. It's never easy. Oh my but gosh. Everyone think, that thought that they were going to buy the book and it was going to be so, you just- Well, <laughs> I make it simple. I make it simple. I mean, it was actually called Energy Healing Basics and then they relaunched the whole thing. Hey, House did? But, um, so I make it simple, simplify, but the work is practice and practice and practice. And when you think of a violinist, practice and practice and practice, and no matter how accomplished the musician might be, they still need to practice and practice and practice. You know, and, and and so I think we do too. But with the words having frequency and vibration, if you're working really hard at you know your thought forms, what are you listening to? What are you surrounding yourself with? Then to bring the energy healing practice in of bringing those words through your body can totally change the alchemy, the chemistry, as above, so below, right? So you're doing all the above work. And that's why I, um, I've actually stepped away from all of the official, you know, organizations of psychotherapy, because they wouldn't appreciate maybe the shamanic aspect of the alchemy that we do, the energy work that is accelerating everybody's healing right now. I mean, even going back to your three breaths, that's a practice that I invite people to do with an associated visualization that when your energy is stuck in the past, to see the timeline of the past, however it looks to you. I mean, for me, it's like my dad used to make a calendar on the wall and I would see them in little blocks of days or else it could be a chronological timeline or some kind of elaborate equipment. Say, so, okay, well, my energy is stuck here and here and here. What color is my energy that's stuck? Can I prize it off gently and pull it into the moment and then let go of the timeline and you're sitting here with your energy, but then the energy that was stuck on that timeline might have heavy emotions, whatever was going on at the time. So to imagine you're holding it in your hand and seeing it getting brighter and clearer until it sparkles. And then like confetti, you can throw it up in the air over yourself and it comes into your own energy field and settles where it will, because some of it might have been from your center of power, which is in your stomach. You know, if you're, if, you know, if you're not as confident, if something happened that made you wobble and you lose, you know, so that piece of you coming back in. Or in the future, when you're really attached to your expectation of something going a certain way, you could get a lasso and lasso to the future, across the timeline into the future, pull that piece of energy back in, feel it landing in your hands again. And okay, I, cleansing is always good. <laughs> you know, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna put something in your mouth unless you know it's clean. So you're not gonna put something in your energy field unless you know it's clean. So again, waiting for it to, to get brighter and sparkly and lighter, and then you can throw it up in the air or you can just hold it in and it comes back in. And what I learned, and I'm sure you can imagine this. I'm sure people watching this can imagine as an author, not yet published, really wanting to be picked up by the publishing house, checking it. Did they read my pitch yet? Did they see it? Did they? When you pull yourself out of the cogs and wheels of something big like that, and you bring your piece of energy here into the present moment, it frees up that process. And it happens quicker because your need and your expectation and your need and your urgency and your need isn't blocking up the process. And you bring that back here with you and then to breathe. And I love that smell, the present moment to really stabilize yourself and center yourself here. 
and then to let go and say okay let it be as it will if it's for me it will will come true so yeah so it's it's that's why I liked what you did because that's the unsaid part is the bringing the energy back in and cleansing it and bringing the energy back in and then being more fully present so so what I wanted to do as a technique today with the energy of those words is to bring them through the body so was that clear I mean was there anything yeah. there that you know, it's so interesting. I'm taking notes here. Um, first of all, I love the uh, the imagery, right? That we each of us connect to spirit, to energy in different ways. And so I'm loving the, like, I'm going to add, like, oh, great. I'm going to like actually imagine. I love like, imagining the timeline back and like, right? Like, come on, here we go, right? Um, what I, I just I'm always like to think of different ways to click in. And so I really love what you did with the imagery, thinking about that. And then, um, so that was just that that note on the piece and bringing all of our energy to this moment, because that is when we're our most resourced, is when our energy isn't in other places. Just like you said, when it's up ahead and like you're in that, I need this to happen, right? That you're kind of like wobbly. You're like topped over, <laughs> like you're, yeah. you're leaning this way. You're like, I'm totally fine. It's, it makes it difficult to like kind of go through what you're doing, you know, <laughs> and at this time when you're like this. Um, so there's something about the come on, like bring bring ourselves back here. Well, so you I know what's interesting that. about empowering people. You know, a lot of the work that I would do is to empower people. And I know we said earlier, you know, an intention, a good intention is to empower people to find their voice, but something that has come up for me is that people know what they want to say. They just don't have the power behind themselves mm -hmm. to say it. I mean, you could imagine, I'm sure you've been in that situation. I have too, where you just know what you want to say, but you're not able to take that step. And if your power is stuck in the past because it happened to you before, then you can use this technique. It's turning into a different technique where you go back to the time where you were disempowered and you unstick that energy and bring it in here and go back further back to that time where you were disempowered and unstick that energy and bring it back in here. And then you clean it and cleanse it. Very important. And then you have that power. And as your body trusts that you have the power, it starts to relax and then you start to flow. And then it becomes a natural thing for you to just hold on to your power because you feel safe to do so. Yeah. So that could be the affirmation that we work with. You know, so yeah, I would see affirmations like medicine or prescription. So I'm not going to give a specific one to everyone watching around power because it might not fit. So coming from the point of view, again, every single word is a packet of energy. So if I was to say I am powerful, there are going to be people out there that really don't resonate with that. So it is safe for me to be powerful is what it's like a downgrade or a stepping down and, and I'm only saying down because you know in our heads that's how we kind of see it but there's nothing any lesser or more than in any of these things and then you say okay it is safe or you say I give myself permission to be powerful and then you go okay well do I you know many people don't ask themselves that question so I'd like to use that one, but other people who are listening can, can add to it, can change, shift, and see where it metamorphoses into. But I give myself permission to be powerful. Sounds like a really great idea. And that's what I was saying earlier about how it's all up in the head. So your brain says, yeah, of course I do. Of course I give myself permission to be powerful, <laughs> right? Yes. So I, I think that's it. so good, that, that point, that piece about and this is what you were just saying into earlier is the resonance, right? Yeah. That I think we've all had those experiences. We're like, I am whatever. We're saying whatever we think that we should be. And like inside we're saying, that's so stupid. No, we're not. <laughs> like, well, exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. And, you know, and as a psychotherapist, you talk about it. Of course, it's a great idea, but the embodiment of it is a totally different process. And that's why I've learned, you know, ways to weave shamanic work into psychotherapy. So they complement each other. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's this whole thing about changing language, alternative therapy versus complementary therapy. I'd like to just take a big cross and cross out the word alternative when it comes to any therapy because everything can complement. And even that the sound of that is softer, whereas an alternative is like, it's this way or this way, you can't have both. You know, so when you say, okay, I give myself permission to be powerful, powerful means full of power. So thinking of a car. Now I'm in Ireland, we call it petrol in Hawaii. Is it gas? Gas, <laughs> right? So an empty car isn't going to go anywhere. So you need to be filled with power. And then there's all these limiting beliefs come up about power and it's like money or love, you know, what do you do with the power? And it's not safe because I'm going to turn into a horrible person and start killing people if I become powerful. And it's like, let's open the heart to that. So say, okay, well, I give my, myself permission to open my heart. And then, you know, so you have to peel it back and peel it back. And one of the things I've realized is the preparation to do this work is just as important as the work itself. Mm. So when you peel it back and peel it back and peel it back, you could say, okay, I'm not ready to be powerful or to feel safe to be powerful or to give myself even permission because my heart is so hurting. To come from a heart space and be powerful is really the best way to do it, but I'm not able to be in my heart space. So some people listening might want to change. I give myself permission to be powerful to I give myself permission to receive healing from my heart. So it's, it's like, you know, you test the note, where are you on the spectrum of music, of scale, of vibration, of frequency? What is it that you need? So even if, if we take a moment just to be silent, where you listen to what's reflected back to you and ask yourself, what is it that I need? Where am I with my stuff? And let your higher self come in and give you the phrase that you're almost ready to be completely in alignment with. And then we take that phrase. So we go back to, I give myself permission to be powerful. And I've said it a few times now and you've got used to it and you've heard me say it and you're kind of saying, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, you know, I should be able to do this. So you say it, but your awareness is in your head. You give myself permission to be powerful and allow your brain to sit with that and go, yeah, it's okay. And you know, it could take a day or two to really feel that, but then you bring the energy of that down into the throat and you say it from there. I give myself permission to be powerful. And the throat is such a bridge from the heart to the head is really a good space to go. And if you hear your voice as you say it from here, if it breaks, if it's weak, it's an indicator that, well, there's healing that's needing to be done. And it doesn't mean that you're not able to do this. It just means you need to take a little bit longer to do this, to really get into alignment with that. I hope this makes sense. Yeah, it does. So let's, let's just, I'm going to come back here just to kind of like build. So everyone, like where, where we're at, right? So first, it's like we're looking at using words, okay? Using words for, we could use it for anything, for healing, for growth, for expansion, for love, like for calling in what we're wanting. It's affirmations, but it's different because it's not just saying something over and over again. It was like, it's, we're, we're, clicking it in we're, we're tapping into the frequency that our body that isn't it's like maybe there's where our body's at and then like what we're saying in our head right and if we keep doing this it's like nothing that it's we're not going to click into alignment right so we're looking at like okay what is what are the words that we can use that can align with our body that can like bring it into whatever. So like today we're talking about powerful, you know, Abby and I, before we hit record, we were like, what's our intention? Our intention is for women to feel, to be able to use their voice, right? To, to ask for what you want. If someone asks you, you know, hey, can you help me with this? For you to be able to say no. <laughs> if, if <you're laughs> know, right? Or if someone asks you to do something that's terrifying and you want, and it's like to say yes, if you want to do that, right? That there's, there's extreme power in your voice, right? So 
we're looking at what are ways simple. This is a simple energetic tool that you can use to shift your energy into more of what you're wanting. And so today we're looking at, we're looking at the word powerful. Okay. Like I am powerful. I'm just noticing. Okay. <laughs> like I can okay, say you kind that. Of said it like a question, right? I can say it, but I'm like, okay. But it's like, okay. We're, so we have these different phrases. Cause we're looking at like, where's, where, where's the authentic truth? Where is the thing that feels like, yes, this is me. And so you know, for me, what I'm feeling through the different options, you said, you know, it is safe to be powerful. Um, you talked about, you know, maybe I need heal. If, if we need healing, we could move into the place I give myself permission to receive healing from my heart. And maybe that's after that, I start to feel that that powerful is safe. Um, for me, what feels most resonant is I give myself permission to be powerful. Like that feels very like, yep, like I absolutely can do that. Um, so we're, we're listening with our bodies, maybe whether it's the sound of our throat or whether it's like a, a smallness in our body or a relaxation in our body, right? We're listening for what's, where's that truth. And then we're like, also it's like listening, no, we're, mm -hmm. we're also listening for all the reasons why we don't feel safe to be powerful. So you could see it like a clearing out because maybe you never asked your body, you know? And like I said, when you're in your head, you come up with all the reasons that you think and your head really wants you to be powerful, but we're still in the throat. We haven't even got down to the stomach yet. And power comes from the seat of power, which is in your belly, it's in your, you know? And so to say it is safe to be powerful, it has to kind of come up through the body mm -hmm. via the throat. So to clear it out, say, okay, well, why do I not feel safe? Why do I not feel safe? Why does my heart not feel safe? Why does my, you know, throat not feel safe? And maybe it does. Maybe it drops all the way down until you get to the belly and you realize, well, that's that thing we did earlier, right? Because a piece of my self-confidence is stuck in the past with something that happened. So then you use the first technique to bring it forward here's the thing though because i didn't anticipate us doing the, the two together but if it feels so stuck in the past and you're forcing it to come in then that's not going to stay with you so what you need to do is sit and say okay what do i need to know so that my energy can come into me now i feel released and then you might hear well, you're not taking great care of yourself right now. You're saying yes to everybody. So I'm not going to want to be with you because you're just going to give me away to somebody straight away unless you start to set better boundaries, unless you upgrade your self-care, unless you don't get the phone every time somebody phones you. <laughs> you know, Make a space in between all the things you do so that you can catch yourself, bring yourself back, and then go on to the next thing. So it's a learning process with the aspects of you rather than letting the brain tell you what you have to do or what you think you have to do or what you read in a book or what someone else told you because it looks different for every single person. Yeah, and it's interesting as well, as you say the words, it is safe to be powerful, obviously a question. It changes as it drops further down into you. It's safe to be powerful. It's kind of weak. So where am I weak? And I'll just sit here and go, bring my mind into the body and go, well, actually it is safe. It is safe. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. What's that feeling? Where is that from? Oh, that's my inner child. And allow her or him to come in and go, okay, I'm the adult now. I can look after you. One of the books you didn't mention that I wrote is called Heal Your Inner Wounds. And there's a whole piece about how to work with the aspects of you that need healing in the present moment as the adult that you are. So you hold their hand and you bring them in and you say, I'm going to look after you. And then they put that person hurt me so much. I said, OK, well, we have to set better boundaries. So you're unraveling and opening. See, the power of a simple statement can open up so much in a person. I love it that you're writing stuff down because people might need to do this and write down everything that comes up for them as they're doing it. And notice how the statement also transforms. So as you eventually do 
come down to the gut and the stomach and say, it's safe to be powerful. Maybe we could just do that now. Put your hands on your tummy and say, I give myself permission to be powerful. And what I notice is that you can do this. You can bring your awareness down to your stomach and say, I give myself permission to be powerful. And your awareness is not actually in your stomach at all. It's outside of your body, to the left, to the right, in front of you, behind you. And you go, okay, I need to bring myself into my body, even though I'm way down here. So a good way to do that is with your feet flat on the ground and an awareness of your spine. And it's like you pull yourself into your spine, but you don't have to suck in your, your stomach, you know, the way we do it. We think people are looking at it. You don't need to soften the stomach, but bring your awareness in. And then you can say, okay, do I give myself permission to be powerful and then sit and see what comes up? And again, bringing it down through the stations of the body and doing it again, it goes back to what I said earlier, is the practicing. So what you're doing is you're forging the pathway so that it's easier then. And if you've done it with one affirmation, you can then you can do it with another. Now, I wouldn't have the same session with different affirmations. But tomorrow, you could do it with a different one. That's what the diary that I wrote is. And, you know, the 2023 diary has... You know, it's like there is not an affirmation for every day. There's maybe three a week so that you sit with the same energy for a few days. And as you bring it in and bring it down, you're easier with it. Hmm. So you can embody it more and gives you space to say, okay, well, I'm not sure about this word, but I can transform it into this. And then your whole frequency changes because you've cleared all the reasons why. But you've taken time with it. So it sticks and for me, what I've, I've noticed in my clients, and <clears throat> you see how my throat is clearing now because stuff comes up through the throat and say, okay, as they grow and change, you know, you, that might be a way of clearing out the path. Mm-hmm. Is that, you know, the physical changes, somebody saying it and go down to the stomach and you're in your stomach more. It gets easier to say, it's easier to feel. And then your, your frequency changes, you attract in different things and then the next time something happens, not only do you hear the words you want to say, you've got the power behind you from your gut to say it, to voice it, to, you know, even to write down three different ways of saying something that, you know, you want to say and see which one fits best. Mm. But it's a process. I mean, you don't just go from zero to a hundred in five seconds. You have to take your time. I love it. So can we go ahead and like, just do it together? So we've been talking about it, but can we, um, so can we play with the affirmation we're playing with? And then, um, just like, imagine like our sisters, they're here, you know, with us that like taking the time, like as you would normally, you know, lead, you know, Abby. So people have an idea of like, oh, I would take this spaciousness to tap in and, you know, ask my, throat here or my heart here I think we went we did throat heart belly yeah right um and just play with the 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 affirmation and can can we sure well we could also do before we even do that when you know you're going you know so we spent some time with the affirmation and the energy of the affirmation this is the preparation and then by putting your feet flat on the ground and taking that breath to imagine your crown chakra opening and the light just coming in as a cleanser to soften and heal and cleanse. So taking in a breath and just drawing down that healing light and releasing and softening the body and noticing, well, am I feeling anxiety around doing this? I give myself permission to be powerful and allow the body to just vibrate in that. And if there's anxiety, again, to step in as the responsible adult that you are and go, okay, what's the anxiety about? It's going to be okay. I don't have to do anything. I'm not going out to, to, you know, to, to, to change the world right now. I'm just 
shifting my vibration. And knowing as well that this is between you and you. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. You're just testing how everything feels. So bringing in that light all the way down your body and breathing out. And what's coming in for me right now is like water, emotions. So just imagine now, I mean, you could be sinking into a hot bath and you're just softening the body and saying it's going to be okay. And then you could just say, dear body, all the aspects of me, show me, show me what's in the way of me embodying, embodying the vibration of it is safe to be powerful or whatever, you know, whatever affirmation you choose to use. And if there is anxiety, just let it trickle down your legs into earth and feel the sweet connection between you and Mother Earth and realize that she's proud of you and she's watching you, looking at you grow. She needs you to speak. She needs you to be completely who you are. That's why you're here. It is safe for you to be powerful, it's safe for me to be powerful when we say it with awareness around your face, awareness in your mind. It is safe for me to be powerful. And we breathe in the light again, just to kind of anchor it in. And relax and let go. I kind of get that sense that the head is clear, that you're in alignment in your mind. And then we bring the energy down to the throat. And really being with your throat, noticing, did you tighten up? I mean, as I say it, my voice can get a little bit hoarse. I'm doing it on behalf of all of you who are doing it, who are watching. Soften your throat. You can find that your, your, your muscles tighten. It's like you're strangling yourself. You're stopping yourself from speaking out. So visualizing a hand around your throat, opening the grip, releasing, and it moving away and the light softening, working on the muscles of your throat, bringing healing in and releasing in the chest and saying, it is safe. I give myself permission to be powerful. I give myself permission to receive the healing around this issue. And just notice how your body feels as you're more in it now as we breathe in and open up the chest and release the shoulders, open up your shoulder blades and drop down into your upper chest. And it's almost like those words are glowing, the energy is glowing in you and you keep your focus on this and you're in your body. And I'm feeling now, I need to release too. You might belch, you might yawn, you might cough, it's okay. It's quite okay. That's your body showing up. It's showing your body's taking part in this. It's good. I saw you yawning there, Amber. <laughs> so we say, okay, what's your affirmation? Bringing your awareness in. I give myself permission. You fill in the blanks. And then I give myself permission of will turn into I am. If you're not ready yet, every day I heal a little bit more. Give myself permission to be powerful and feel it not just in the front of your upper chest, but coming into your spine and behind you. And then we drop down into the heart space and the heart was expecting us. And it's just glad to have our attention. So let's just breathe some soft healing light into the heart. And we say thank you to the heart, while we're in the heart, gratitude. So just imagining you've got these little antennae on the top of your head, you're tuning into what does gratitude feel like, the energy of gratitude, and you're bringing that in, and it just explodes in your chest, or it ripples across your chest, or trickles across your chest. It could feel like a release, or like something just opening in the liquid coming out, just, you know, whatever you're holding onto in your chest, to say, it's okay, it's safe to heal, it is safe to heal, 
and let this go. And if you're feeling a bit woozy or lightheaded or, you know, a little bit off center, pushing your feet into the ground, remembering where you are. I'm a big, big advocate for staying in the present moment and staying with the body, not going off somewhere in a, you know, in a trap. We're here. And then putting your hands on your heart and just feel it a little bit looser, a little bit brighter. And then say your affirmation. I give myself permission to be powerful. And we have all those limiting beliefs around power. So while we're in the heart, we say, okay, heart, if I check in with you when I'm powerful, as I am connecting into my power because I am powerful. If I have heart centered, powerfulness, you will always steer me in the right direction. I would never do anything bad. Is this true? And feel the yes riffle through your whole body. This is the piece the brain forgets because the brain thinks it can do everything on its own, which is why we don't trust the brain because the brain makes these decisions without the heart. And it's from our heart is where we know that we're in a heart-centered space. So you get a, a, an agreement with your heart. I give myself permission to be powerful as long as I check in with my heart. And notice how your energy changes around that. And while we're here at this as a checkpoint, staying in the heart, allowing some more energy that might be stuck in your timeline in the past to come flooding back to you now in a ball in front of you because it knows as long as you're in your heart then that energy is protected it's safe it's warm it's it's for you and just see this energy as a different color getting brighter as it heals and just joining you connecting in with your energy field and maybe it's as if you've been a jigsaw puzzle with a missing piece and this is the piece that just snaps into place and you're like, oh, now I feel I'm back. Now I feel I'm here more. And we breathe in and out with the heart and with gratitude. And you know what? This is a lot. So if you feel like stopping here, that's okay. But we're going to keep going, but you don't have to go all the way. But if you're ready to come all the way with us, then get an awareness of your stomach while staying in your heart and breathing in the light. See, there's a lot of multitasking to do, but I think you're up for it. And soften the body again, just soft, 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 and connecting into that energy. I give myself permission in itself just has so much beauty. The energy of I give myself permission. I give myself permission to be powerful and just checking in advance, going down your spine just a little bit, coming down from the heart into the stomach. You might want to keep some of your awareness in your heart and some in your stomach at the same time, depending on, depends on you and how you're wired and how you're made and if you're able. But keeping inside your body and in, in your spine and going down to your seat of power, which is just below the belly button. And breathing in and out. Now what's interesting here is that you might realize you're not actually able to be present here or your, your energy feels a little bit weaker here and it's because, you know, those pieces of you, those, those pieces of energy are stuck in your timeline somewhere. So with your hand on your tummy, you can say, okay, is there any energy of mine from my timeline? that can unstick itself and come here and come back to my stomach now. Where's my power? I call my power back. I'm saying that with resolution. I call my power back to me. You might get flashes of different people and relationships showing up in your mind. You say, oh, that's where it was. Okay, as long as I can cleanse and heal my energy before it glues back into my stomach. There you go. In the seat of power, sitting with it, being with it just for a few more minutes as you get used to what it feels like. 
And this is where we feel anxiety, isn't it? Because it kicks us out. It kicks us out of our power. So just say thank you. We connect into gratitude again and bring that gratitude down through the body. You can stop at the heart and say thank you again to the heart as you trickle that gratitude down into your stomach. And just give it another minute as you settle in. I'm being prompted to suggest to you to ask your stomach what it might need from you today. If you haven't visited your stomach in a while, your stomach might need something. Perhaps you're dehydrated. Perhaps certain foods are not agreeing with you. Just ask your stomach what you need. Maybe you need a belly laugh, a good belly laugh. And my stomach just made a noise. Maybe yours did too, as you relax and release and go, okay, I'm in my seat of power. And notice if you're still in there, because you could have just hopped out. Bring yourself back in. Go deep within. And say the affirmation one more time. I give myself permission to be powerful. And there might be a rising up in you of all the reasons why you don't. So write those down if they do come up and work on them. And practice, practice, practice doing it again over time. Breathing in, we'll do it one more time from the stomach. I give myself permission to be powerful. I feel the energy of that going into both of your hips, coming down your legs, into your feet. And beneath the earth is your earth star chakra, just below the root, trickling into this beautiful ball of light. I don't know if you've worked with the earth star chakra, but it's the one that keeps you here. And just feel that radiating love as it's spinning and it's golden and it's red or it's orange, depending on who you are and where you are with yourself. And that's all fine. And maybe it drops down a little bit deeper in earth. Maybe it expands a little bit until you feel more grounded. And as your awareness is down there, you could say, I give myself permission to be a powerful being in my life. I give myself permission to set good boundaries and to stick to them. There's so much you can do. And then bringing your awareness all the way back up to your heart and then to your body as a whole and then back in the room and open your eyes and smell the moment. I love that. I'm going to use that. <laughs> oh my goodness. So good. Thank you for, thank you for leading us through that, Abby. Like it, I, I think that it just helped me drop in, right? You know, like I had kind of like the, it was great because I could write down before we were speaking, but when we actually went through it, I had a physical experience of it. Um, so I could be like, oh, this is what this feels like to connect. Yeah, in. each time you do it, it's different depending on what's opening and what's unraveling and what I'm discovering at the moment because the cosmic energies are so strong that it's not just our stuff that we're feeling, it's our ancestral stuff finally coming up for release. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't recognize what comes up to stick with it and say, is this mine? Is this my grandmother's? You know, is this my great grandfather's? And say, I, I honor you. And now it's time to be released from my energy field so I can truly step into the next phase of our lives as that powerful being that I yeah. want to be so this is not just you wanting it it's you becoming that I think it's so like thank you Abby for this session I just want to like iterate like how I know that it felt it can feel very simple like what we just did but this is so this this aligning of frequency is so powerful like if you are not making the money that you want to be making if you are not in the relationship that you want to 
have, if you feel unclear about what you're meant to do, if you want to put your work out there and you feel scared, you're not doing it. It's like, it's a misalignment of frequency, right? There's, there's, and so this is a way, a really simple, beautiful way to bring your body into the frequency that, that you desire and to to know what's in the way. Mm -hmm. Something like it is safe to give and receive love. Do it with that one. It is, you know, I give myself permission to be successful. I think we all have a different definition of success. So to define that first for yourself, so you're clear on what that is, you know, or or, or give and receive love, you know, I'm an abundant being, I allow money to come in, and then all of your inner child conditioning rises up from your seat of power as to why you're not letting it in. Yeah. So we, uh, we would love for you to, if, for those of you who have done this experience, to jump in the Facebook group and to share what was your affirmation, the one that you worked with, and what did you notice as we were, you know, going through the different parts of the body? What was the body telling you at different places? Like, I know that my throat, I started coughing at one point, and then I was yawning at one point. It was like, my body was doing all sorts of things, right? Um, but we, we come jump in into the group and share like notice what what you notice at the end like I feel very like like really grounded and yeah definitely more powerful (laughs) than than what I started what else I would invite people to do is Hmm. to even wait for 24 hours and then see is it different when you do it tomorrow you know did you hold on to that feeling or did you regress right back to how you were and if you didn't hold on to it to sit with what came up for me that's not letting me mm-hmm. embody this so that it becomes a natural way of being, you know, because when you're changing your frequency, it can take time to settle, you know, it's like a pendulum swinging back and forth and to come back in. And then you just have it exactly right. Then your phone rings and the person on the phone knocks you out, you know, so just to notice what knocks you out and come in out and talk about that as well. Compare notes so that, you know, this is normal. Lots of people go through the same thing and it's good to, 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 you know, to just feel, okay, validation, that kind of stuff. It's good to talk about it. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So here's for creating whatever frequency that you're wanting to create this next year, right? Like, like <laughs> we're, we, we've just given you the tools to use any, uh, tap into anyone you want. And Abby, I know if you have a way for people to continue connecting with you, you have an offering for our ladies. Would you like to share a little bit about that? I would. And it sounds, when I tell you what it is, it sounds like it's got absolutely nothing to do with our session. It's um, a healing session, a whole hour, which is based on stop comparing yourself to everybody else and be who you are. You see, here's the thing. It sounds like it's separate to this. But if you're going to give yourself permission to be anything, the very first thing you do is start noticing, well, that person is this and that person is that, and I need to be more like them and I need to be more like that. So you're disconnecting again from you. So like, well, I give myself permission to be powerful, even though so-and-so is powerful and I don't like what they're doing or I do like what they're doing or I wish it was more like them. And it helps you bring your energy back in even more at a deeper level where you say, okay, well, I'm here and this is me and they're over there. And they can do what they want. And I'm going to do what I want. So that's so good. Cause you know, c- comparison, we might think of comparison as like, oh, they're better than me. Like that thing that can actually stop us from stepping up, but there's also the comparison. Um, what it really does is it erodes our self-trust, right? If we're continually comparing, there's like this feeling of like, something's wrong with me. I'm broken. Right. If like, th- like it can get, why is it so up. easy for the neighbor and they, you know, why do they have this? I said, yeah, well, maybe that's their life. That's what they've signed up for. And the lessons that you're doing, you know, so all of my healing sessions bring all of these concepts through the entire body, radiate them out in your energy field so that you're embodying them. Yeah. Because then yeah. it's second nature and you don't have to look it up in a book. You don't have to remind yourself. It's just in there you know the the link is right here below right below the video you can find a link right there to to grab yeah here's to be more you (laughs) 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 i I want i want you (laughs) we want you that's what we're supposed to be that's what healing is removing all the parts that are not you Mm -hmm. and showing up unapologetically as yourself 
No I one else it. could do that. <laughs> That's right. So thank you, Abby, so much for bringing your gift for, um, yeah, for helping us tune more into ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. um, and into the frequency that we want to call in, the energy, the the love, the belonging, the power, the the grace, the the healing, all the bits and pieces. Um, thank you for showing us um, a beautiful doorway to do that. Today. Well, thank you for asking me. And your energy is fabulous. It's just I, I love the, you know, it's a beautiful space that you create. So just just to reflect that back to you. So thank you. Thank you. All right. On that note, friends, we will see you on our next Unleashed session if we don't see you in the Facebook group before then. And until then, radiate whatever frequency you want to call in. <laughs> <Or> you can <laughs> <check it. laughs> All right. Aloha.